But you see, the problem with the NDC is, as I said earlier, they will have to figure out what they do with free SHS, what kind of narrative they generate about free SHS for 2024 election. Because this free SHS is so old. Akufado started talking about free SHS in 2008, 2007. That's when he started. NDC won elections with Professor Mills, zero on free SHS. Uh, John Mahama came, zero on free SHS. I understand from Grapevine that President Rawlings was always concerned about whether the NDC can implement the free SHS policy because in his going around the country, he thought that people felt that the free SHS was a good policy. So I understand that he was telling the NDC that if you can implement it, we're good. That's why you hear some of the apostles of John Mahama say that President Mahama started free SHS. That's why they say that. Because Rawlings was giving them pressure that you should do this free SHS thing. Now, President Mills didn't do it. President Mahama didn't do it. In fact, President Mahama said it's not possible. And now it has been done. And now they are confronted with what is the most important elections of the Fourth Republic, the 2024 election. They must decide and tell us, we don't like free SHS, we'll cancel it. Or, we like free SHS, but the way Akufado is doing it is wrong. This is the way we will do it. We will say that Form 1 should do this, Form 2 should do this, we'll cancel double track, we will do that, we'll do... In fact, there's no double track anymore, so it didn't feature in the 2020 campaign. It's, it's gone. The MPP said it will go, it's gone. We know that it's gone. So you can say anything you want about it, but you have to bring us a blueprint of how you do your free SHS or that you will cancel it. It's a simple matter. NDC, uh, when the MPP kept campaigning on free SHS 2012, 2016, it was the NDC that said that the free SHS is not possible. Now they are running helter-skelter with their tail between their legs. They don't know how to deal with it. So they want to try and discredit it. And this is the way Clementa Park wants to discredit it. Organize a video and come and say people are sleeping into what, what, how did? Why did you think that you won't be found out? That's what I worry about them. And that's, that's the problem I have. Why do you think that in setting up this thing, you will not be found out? We are here, loaded with an ammunition called truth. We will deal with it. You, we will, you will be found out. So because they have complained about free SHS and the shadows of free SHS is chasing them into 2024's election, because by that time, there will be 2.5 million people who have benefited from free. Even if 1 million remember that it's a coup and they decide to vote for him, I don't know whether they will, I don't know whether they should, it's up to them. But if they decide to do that, that's 1 million votes ahead. That's 500,000 ahead, 1 million ahead, 400,000 ahead from the people who will remember that we have gone to school at the discretion and the policy of Adodan Kwaku, for the president was once born, who rose up and said, taxpayers' money will pay for secondary education. If they can remember that, or if they are told that and decide, that's why the NDC is running Helter Skelter. In 2016, they told the Ghanaian people that the free SHS was not going to happen. So Ghanaian people should not be fooled into the free SHS to vote for Aku Fuado. That's what the NDC said. Here is General Secretary of the NDC, Fifi Kwete, of course, MP for K2 South, as he then was when he made the statement. Have a look. Free SHS. That is what you call all lies be lies. Free SHS. That is what you call all lies be lies. I wonder how Fifi Kwiti feels right now when he knows that free SHS, that's what you call all truth, it be truth. 2.5 million people have been educated from what NDC's general secretary said is all lie be lie. That's what, that's what has happened. That's what has happened to him, Fifi Kwiti. That egg is on his face. And his general secretary of the party today is going into an election. He has to tell the people that I will stop free SHS. He should say it. Let's see. They should say it. They should say it. Politics is about thinking, ideas, competing ideas. Nobody brought free SHS. Akufado sat in his house, thought about it, and presented it to the Ghanaian people. Nobody brought one district, one factory. Akufado sat in his office with his people, thought about it, went through a process, and then said, Ghanaian people, I will do one district, one factory. Nobody brought planting for food and jobs. Akufado sat in his dining table with his policy people and thought about it. What are the other people thinking about that has not happened before? So that they come and tell us that when we come to power, this is what we'll do. One district, one factory had never been mentioned in Ghana's lingua, ever, political lingua, never. It was Akufado who brought it. Akufado started it. What is another politician bringing? If every politician in the history of our country had been bringing up innovative things like this, we will be Malaysia, we will be Singapore, we will be Dubai. But you have politicians like this 
who go and take a photograph and come and try and score political points over a matter that is racking their nerves. Free SHS is racking NDC nerves. Free SHS is racking NDC nerves ahead of 2024. They don't know what to say about it. They are not sure. President Mahama says that now parents pay more money for, to go to secondary school than when free SHS was free. It's even illogical. It's completely illogical because he knows that in parliament, government has bought a budget which parliament has approved that government spends on free SHS. He knows that. How can it be cheaper? How, how can it be more expensive now? It's not possible. But that's what he said. And that's why I say that the whole free SHS conversation is racking NDC nerves ahead of 2024. They don't know what to do about it. I like Miracles Abuaji, and I'm going to end this story on that. Next story is Akufuado and the money laundering. Don't go anywhere. That's coming up. We have so much to tell you about that. Akufuado and the money laundering. There is a person who sits in the NDC's executive, National Executive Committee. By his role, he's also a member of the Functional Executive Committee. That man is closer to the guy in the video than Akufuado is. I'll show you how. Don't worry. We'll deal with it. Ten minutes past the top of that at 10 o'clock. This is it. When I say that um, NDC NEFs are racked by free SHS, I'm going to now play you a conversation between uh, my good friend Sami Jinfi of uh, Christ Embassy. I always say that. Sami Jinfi and Miracle Sabuaji. I, I have not, an, I, I don't know whether the NDC are going to find an antidote to Miracle Sabuaji, but this is the guy who floors Sami Jinfi almost everywhere they meet. He destroys Sami Jinfi everywhere. Because Miracles has a, a pack of truth. And so that's why he's able to do that. Watch this interview. It's about free SHS. It's about Sami Jinfi making an allegation and Miracles dealing with it. We'll end on that one. Have a look after that. Text messages. After that, we are going all the way to Al Jazeera. Who is the money launderer? Why is Akufado his lawyer? That's coming up. Here's Miracles and uh, Sami Jinfi. Have a look. You point to me one single secondary school <laughs> that your government has been able to build and complete in the last six years with the over 300 billion debts that you have accumulated in the last six years. One secondary school. There is none to show for. Go to La Laribanga. There's an Islamic school completely built. First school for the people of Laribanga. <laughs> when you go to Nalurugu, there's a freshly built secondary school for them. Abu Mosu SHS, have you seen that school? The Abu Mosu SHS alone is 30 E-blocks put together. What they call E-block is nothing but a classroom block. It is not a secondary school. It is just one of the infrastructure that we have in a lot of the secondary schools. The, a lot of the e-blocks that they speak of, we have had to come to come and add even the, some of the auxiliary facilities to them to make them operational. Again, Sami Jemfi has the fixation of constantly putting out lies and falsehood and wants everybody to... Let me tell you, I have just given you a list of secondary schools that have been built by this government from scratch to correct that falsehood and consistent palpable lie. For some strange reason, he's been saying this lie for five years. And for some reason, my party and my government has also refused to call him out. It is a lie. It is false. All the communities I have mentioned to you, when you go to those communities, you see the scuba. <laughs> Free SHS is racking NDC nerves. It is. I benefited from free SHS policy. I, I, if you don't understand, I'll tell you why. I benefited from it. But I know that it's racking NDC. It's a great policy. Yes, the years to come, you will see the number of civil engineers, electrical engineers. I, my guy, the guy I met in Prisek, uh, so this guy, he was in Koforidia in the 2012 campaign. He was a JSS boy. President Akufado went there and uh, he wanted to ask a question in his school. And he asked the president, that, Are you sure? that if you are elected, you can do the free SHS. And President Kufado said, yes, I will. He was in JSS 1 or 2. So by the time he got to SS1, free SHS had started. He went to Presec. He went through Presec. He became school prefect at Presec. He went to medical school. He's now on a scholarship in Canada. A product of free SHS is going to come out from one of the best Canadian medical training institutions. And he's going to become a doctor here. We are going to gather all of those people. And then we will see that free SHS is a fantastic policy. Human development is everything we need. We don't even need gold. We don't even need diamond. Human development is everything. And that's where I remember Dr. Charles Rekubrobe, who ran for elections as president. And I was on his campaign. And he told me, and he published to the whole world, that the, the theme of his campaign is growing people for Ghana's development. And everybody has forgotten about that. I need to take that book of Dr. Brobe's campaign message when he was running for presidency, I think, in 2000. He said, growing people for Ghana's development. 
We have to grow people. Yes, we can grow bananas, we can grow plantain, we can grow cassava, but we have to learn how to grow people. That's what makes the difference, it's not the gold. If the gold is what makes the difference, Ghana and South Africa will be controlling the world because between Ghana and South Africa, we control the gold production. We don't control the money because we don't have the people. We just control the, the, the production. We just take it from the ground and put it on Emirates and it's gone. And the, the people who have developed themselves as gold experts, they make the money. So growing people for Ghana's development is important. Anybody who is educating our people to take them to university, and uh, there are parks, says, somebody says it's all lie, be lies. Somebody says it's embarrassing. And all for a, a hanker and hunger for political power. That's wrong. That is very, very wrong.